Lads, how are we? Tank, we got you at last, mate. The things yeah. we have to go through with Hang technology. On, it doesn't oh, say God. recording in the corner like it normally does. Yeah, it does. Live, 10 seconds, 11, 12. It does. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah. Look it's not you, on mine. I'm not editing in this out as well, so this is staying in the podcast. <laughs> Leave it in. Look at Wait, it. It's not on mine. Why is yeah. that? That's weird, that. <laughs> Fuck's sake, throwing me off my routines and everything here. We are recorded. You look great. Oh, Tank, um... Yeah, you, that was. I was very impressed that you managed to get on this podcast, mate, because I had no faith whatsoever that uh, you were going to overcome those tech issues there. Do you know what, mate? I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting good. Getting good, I am. It's like it's a bit scary. I copy and pasted for Jimmy last week. And I <laughs> I did, it. Yeah. On a phone, though, not just <laughs> on a phone. No, not scary. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Phone, when mate. I actually see you copy and paste a link, I actually thought in my head, I was like, "How's he done that?" <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was flabbergasted when he sent that. I didn't know where. I thought someone had his phone. I was like, "Sharon, put his phone down." <laughs> uh, well, Frankie's Frankie's started school. Tank, how are you feeling? You're an emotional oh, man. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's fucking, and it, it was kind of like the way he walked in, as if like there was no remorse for me at all. He just like cracked on and went in. I was like, you little bastard. As I yeah, said on yeah. Twitter, mate, he's just glad to not have to do <laughs> labour on the tractor all day. I know. <laughs> Listening no, to no, you but... spout shit facts. <laughs> <laughs> True facts, though, Jimmy. Don't yeah, Google them. Don't yeah. Google Don't Google, them. <laughs> don't Google them. Uh, Jim, what's going on in your world, mate? Not a lot, mate. Just fucking same as always, travelling around the country, watching kids play football, mate. I'm racking up those FIFA points. Oh, mate, yeah. Bradford yesterday, half seven. Got home at three. That was fun. Really? Yeah, How'd he get on? Yeah, all right. I They had some under 10s. and I sent you that picture. And yeah. my lad's quite small. And the, honestly, the lad's like five foot, which is doesn't sound tall. But for an eight-year-old, it's pretty big. Like yeah. uh, it's The beard I was worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you gone with the white microphone this week? Jim? I want white today, reason? yeah, mate. Yeah, no, no reason. I just I was looking at me colours and they're all a bit similar, so I thought white stood out a bit more than the rest. So I need to pick a decent one next week. Just Did don't get too close to it, mate. It's not that, Jamie. I'm more worried about the makeup going on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, lads, today, mate. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on, you say you haven't got makeup on today. Not today, no, 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 no. It's in here, it's, uh, it's in here, but I've not. I've, oh, 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 he's dropped his lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> dropped it, lad. It's in oh, here, but I've not put it on. But I'm getting a sweat on now. You're making me all flustered and embarrassed. Oh, sorry, lad. I'll, we'll, we'll take a sidestep because I want to start by coming to you on this one, Tank, right? I've got this agenda, as we usually do, across the talking points of all the different games. And I was thinking, what order should we do it on? And I'll be honest, I'm going to scrap it and I'm going to start straight away with a topic that is very much in the news at the moment. And that is VAR, because I feel like this the whole weekend, you can cherry pick any game you want. And there's probably some type of shite VAR decision in there. I mean, the two the two big ones that have obviously caught the most of the headlines is the Chelsea game with West Ham. Uh, the disallow goal, there's the disallow goal between Newcastle and Crystal Palace. Um, you know, the 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 noise coming out of the PG MOL uh, is that they're sorry for getting it wrong and there'll be some type of independent review. Would well, I've had enough yeah. of that shite tank? It's very deflating watching games and these things continually happening week after week. It's, I mean. Jamie, how long have we been going on about this now since the early days when we started this podcast and we were speaking about v VAR back then and we're still now talking about it. how long are you meant to give these clowns? And the problem, I, I tweeted about this the other day, the problem what we've got is, for me personally, for the last seven or eight years, the official standards in this country of the Premier League has been fucking really poor, really poor. So all that we've done is... All of the referees who've retired who were shit back then, they're the shit referees now who are in charge of VAR. So how is it going to get any better? I mean, this weekend was a fucking a new low. I mean, you've got to feel for West Ham. I mean, come on. Anyone who's got a fucking ounce of brain or knowledge of any type of football, you, you know that there's nothing wrong with that. Jimmy's and laughing because he, he he knows what's coming in a minute because he has a different view to us on this one. <laughs> Go on, Tank, it's not, sorry. It's not, it's not a foul. I mean, the goalkeeper spilled the ball and he's jumped out towards the fucking player and the player's jumped over him. So what, what does he want the player to do? But even the, even the Newcastle one, I've watched the Newcastle one over and over and over. And if he doesn't give the goal, he's got to give a penalty to Newcastle because the defenders pushed him in the back. So 
he's going to hit that ball. It? Pick your poison. Yeah, so it's a, it's either a penalty or you let the goal go. But the fact that the goal got, I mean, it's fucking, it's just comical. And listen, I think the man you and I think that they're the Arsenal one. That's a goal. The new no. laws this season have come out and said that they're going to let contact go. Now, there's very minimal contact in that, and I think he's weak as piss, Ericsson, and he's lost the ball. So, if you look at that, about one second before it, the Man U player like smashes into the Arsenal player and shoulder barges and knocks him off the ball. Now, if if that if that's a foul on Ericsson, but that's a foul on the Arsenal player before that. I mean, some of the decisions what's getting made is just, it's laughable now. So we, we've always said about the, the lack of consistency, and I think that's what, what I've had an issue with. And, and we'll go through some of the decisions and, and give our opinions on each, because I, I share a slightly different view to you on you, that, that tank. I can see why it was given the Ericsson one, to be honest. It's soft. And I know what we're saying, that they're trying to let the game flow. I think it, it's probably not been helped that it looked like an outstretched arm that didn't it, it didn't look like a natural shoulder barge. And this is the things I'm trying to explain to the kids at the moment. They're diving in for shoulder barges when it's not even there really to, to do it. It's got to be like nearly like a, you know, a, a side-by-side shoulder barge. Whereas if you've got an outstretched arm, it kind of looks like a push. It was, I could see why it was given. Jim, I have to come to you on the Chelsea one because I'd like to think that you've seen the light since your initial uh, diagnosis of that one. Um, you don't share Tank's views. I, I don't think it should be a, a, a foul. Are you just being awkward here now? For no, the no, 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 sake, genuinely you not. Genuinely not. I honestly think that when Bowen's gone through, he, he okay, he's gone over Mendy, but he leaves his legs tra- he leaves his trailing Is he penalty leg. hunting? I think he was, yeah. And in his trailing leg hits Mendy. Okay, it's really, really soft, and Mendy makes a whole meal of it. But if he doesn't, if he jumps over him or or doesn't leave his leg dangling, trying to get a penalty, I think he gets a. I think it's not a foul, but because he does that, I think that's what they've seen. And in slow mo, it, it looks worse because his legs hit makes contact with Mendy, and after the check incident. I think keepers just get away with murder. I'm not saying it's right. I just think that's why it was given as a foul. So I can actually see that one being given and why it was given. doesn't mean I agree with it, but I can see, I can understand why it was a foul. Um, but yeah, the, the VAR decisions, like I say, the Newcastle one was horrendous. How they never went and looked at Van Dyke's to have a look at that for, for a red card. The Connor Cody goal, I thought, that it came off Milner last. So does that not constitute it coming off a defender and the goal standing? I don't think they even looked at that. Whether that counts or not, I'm not, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure on the rule. But if it did, surely that's something to contest as well. They were just looking at the pure offside. Um, so I just think they've got the priorities wrong. Just do offsides and leave everything else to the referee and we can we can debate that. So So this but, is yeah. the, I'm glad you said that because this is where my bugbear is. I thought correct me if I'm wrong here, Tank, I thought that the plan for VAR was to not re-referee games. As in, if it's a clear and obvious error, they'll they'll get involved, but they'll still let the referee dictate those terms. They'll give them the advice. They'll give them the power to make these decisions. It just feels like VAR has become more of a talking point when in reality it was meant to to be the opposite. And Jimmy made a couple of points there on, on some of the decisions. I mean, on the Chelsea one, it's actually Graham Sooness agrees with you, Jim, which is two people I didn't think would agree on much, to be fair. So um, I'm I'm with Tank on this. It's never a penalty in a month of Sundays. Um, I think Mendy, Mendy has realised he's cocked up and he's played for the cameras. And I'm always of this opinion, not all contact means a foul. Um, just because you touch someone doesn't give them the opportunity to act like they've been shot. I think they got away with one massively. The Newcastle one is a piss take. The, last, last, the less said about that one, the better. I actually do think Van Dyke's lucky. To be honest, yeah, it's a red card. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, in this current day and age, I, I'd probably think it it is more of a red card than a yellow card. To be honest, if it's, I think somebody said something about an amber card. But look, in this day and age, it's it's probably did you hear a red. The, did you hear the explanation on the match as to why it was a yellow and not a red? Who's this? If it's Dermot Gallagher, I don't want to hear. I can't remember. It. Was it Peter Walton on? Um, oh, it's even BT worse. Sport, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he said, because of the force ended up on the foot 
Yeah, that's, that's what David Gallagher said he today could, as well. He could do it. So, in theory, you could kick someone in the head, glide all the way down the body and put the force on the foot and it's a yellow card. <laughs> like, I don't understand that ruling. If, it, if the foul starts at the knee, it starts at the knee, whether it lands at the foot or wherever, it's a it's a red card. I just... They're absolute idiots, aren't they? But is, is this not the point, though, Tank? Is that, and I, I tweeted something today about Dermot Gallagher with picky poison, Dermot Gallagher, Peter Walton. These lads are getting wheeled out and having to make excuses for what are fundamentally shite decisions. And then they're getting antsy because people are calling them out on the fact that they're just talking utter bollocks. Is this not half the problem? Is just there's no accountability. They're, they're making us try and look like fools for things that we can see with our own eyes and then try and tell us that they're right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. This is what goes back to my point before, Jamie. We're relying on shit referees from seven, eight years ago to try and tell us that the shit referees now are making good decisions and they're all just a shower of shit. And this this is the issue. And listen, I'm not one of them who beats on the drum and says X players need to get involved, but there has to be some sort of someone who's with football knowledge who's got to get older this now. Because our game, we've got the greatest game in world football, but it's constantly getting fucking dragged down by these imbeciles who were trying to run it. It's like uh, what's going to be in the lies either, have you? It's just like, you know, I just, I can't get my head round how that Newcastle one for me was actually, the more I look at it, that Newcastle one for me is worse than the West Ham one. Because I get what uh, Jimmy's saying. I don't agree with it, but I get what he's no. saying. That there's kind of that where you're going, oh, he's gone for it. He's trying for a pen. But, you You've can, in some a... parallel universe, yeah, see why somebody like, could think that. Possibly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. the issue what you've got is when you slow motion everything down, it yeah. looks 50, 100 times worse. But, the but this Newcastle is where one... you're saying, uh, the Mendy one in particular, by the letter of the law, it's a foul because he's made contact. But any any player knows that what he's trying to do there and what's yeah. happened. So they they let that go, I think. And but the, issue, again. The, the issue why I don't think it's a foul is because you've got a fucking six foot nine goalkeeper who's flying out a full force to a player's feet. He has to get out the way. You know, yeah. you've got to jump over him. No, he's I probably can't. half shit himself and he's come out thinking, fucking hell. And he's jumping over him. But the yeah. Newcastle one for me is completely and utterly baffling. How you can give that free kick to the to their goalkeeper when his man has just pushed the lad in the back. Yeah. It's on his head. If you slow motion it down, he's just about to nod it in and he gets a shove in the back and clatters the keeper. So if it's not a goal, just give the pen. But if the United is a foul, then that's a foul as well. This is where the consistency doesn't come into exactly. play. It's exactly the same. It's the Tyrone and, Mings one. Did you see him? I can't remember if it was this week or the week before. Oh, where he just he threw Arsenal. a player in the box yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. Sack, okay, I think. But, yeah, okay. Well, you, you're saying now that you've changed the rules and you're going to allow more contact. So if that's not a penalty, but then Ericsson's is not a foul. So this, so this is the thing. There's no consistency at all. Yeah, and it's and it for me it's ruining the spectacle. In the, if you look at so Champions League football is back this week, right? Watch how little. VAR mm. infringes on the spectacle. Whereas exactly. in every game in the Premier League, it feels like somewhere someone is making a cock up. And that's not this this isn't a technology issue. This isn't an implement this isn't VAR as a as a concept being flawed. It's the cabbages that are running VAR that don't know how to interpret the rules. And Jimmy made a point before. Anyone that's played the game knows what Bowen is trying to do there. They know the natural momentum. They probably know he's looking for a pe he's on the, maybe looking penalty hunting. They know that it's not a foul. Like, do you know what I mean? They just they know that it's not a foul. Whereas if you're looking at these people that are trying to look at the letter of the law, I also think there's an element of trying to protect their buddies and not expose them for making bad decisions. It's just a clusterfuck, a total mess. And for me, it's actually stopping the enjoyment of the games. And it was never, this was our worry initially. And it just seems like it's getting worse, not better. Yeah. The forest one, what's your thoughts on the forest one? That's not a penalty for me. I don't really know what the lad's expected to do. He's come and blocked it and he's gone like that. And his arms are really close to his side. And yeah. I mean, in the past, it doesn't get given, does it? But like I say, I, to be, I thought it was a penalty, regardless of how close he is. Or if he's stopping the ball going goalwards, it's you know, it, and it hits your arm. It's meant to be in an unnatural position. So if he's out like that, you go, yeah. I mean, the yeah. lad's turning and he's kind of like, he's only two yards away. And that's the first time, actually, that he's he's overruled VAR, hasn't he? Mm. Well, I don't understand this. Like you say, it was meant to be clear and obvious. Now they check every single yeah, goal for do. every yeah. single build. What can we find? Oh, what can what? we find? We're, we're looking for stuff instead of going, what you know, was it? Oh, I think that might have been there. Can I have another look at it? 
and they did it really well. They brought that guy in from Australia, didn't they? And he did it really well in the A League. Um, there's a video quite I've viral. Seen, yeah. Is that the talk good. when they're talking? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, constant chatting going on, and that's probably that's how it should be, rather than going, "Oh, every goal, right? Let's see what we can find." <laughs> Jim, and they won't do it, mate, because it'll expose them for being a gang of charlatans. <laughs> well, yeah. That's the problem. So, it's where, the... where do we go? Do we, let's boycott it. Yeah, so uh, to finish off before we move to some of the games to talk about the actual football bit, how do you fix it, Tank? Just fucking bin it off. Fuck was football, it off. Before I come in, football wasn't broke. It was just yeah. the game where referees make human error. It, it happens. Every walk of life, there's human error in everything what people do, you, you know. And football was the same. And, it, you know, you speak about offside and the pubs go fucking offside. That, and, you you know, that's part of the game. Now, mm. people don't want to celebrate goals. You know, you look at you look at the derby, for instance, the goal, Everton are going berserk and then all of a sudden it's choked off and then Liverpool fans are going berserk. That's not football. Mm. But this is my point is you, f- you fuck it all off for, apart from offside and then... Um, you have the guy watching and like you look at the palace and the guy on the video goes, you know, to the referee, look, ref, you might want to go have a look at look, look at that. It seems like a push in the back. Um, go and have a look. And if he goes and look and then he makes his decision, that's up to him. He shouldn't be one making the decision to say whether it's right or wrong. The referee on the pitch should go and then have a look. They should just be advising, oh, this might have happened. Go and have a check of that. Yeah. A clusterfuck. So, um, football. Tank, the Merseyside Derby. So, Jimmy is married into an Everton family. Uh, Tank is as red as they come. I'm as red as they come and try to stay impartial. But uh, so maybe Jimmy can ask the questions on this one. I <laughs> try. said a try. Uh, Tank, what did you make of the of the Derby? Because I suppose as a, as a neutral, it felt like it was a cracking battle. There was lots of drama. Uh, both teams going hammer and tong. Lots of talk and points. I thought Everton equipped themselves well. Uh, I thought they... they they definitely are showing some signs of improvement under Frank Lampard. Um, I think Liverpool created enough chances. There's certainly a lot of talking points. Where do you? Uh, what, what did you make of the game? I thought it was a good game. You know, as you say, Everton made it, you know, the type of hurly burly game what they needed to make it. Um, I must be honest, I was surprised at the selection what Klopp went with. I've got to be honest. The midfield. I thought, yeah, it was just like, oh, fucking hell. Big you know, ass for the big, two young lads. It is a big ask, yeah. Um, but listen, it nearly paid off. Liverpool probably should have won it on overall chances and Pickford made some great saves late on. Um, but I'd probably say a draw was a fair result in, in the end. You know, when you look at it, it's probably the right result. What do you think from the, the neutral, slightly blue side, Jim? <laughs> no, mate, I thought it was a great game, to be honest with you. I mean, you support so, every team in the Premier League at this stage. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, whoever gets it right gets a prize. Um, so we, uh, you know, as you said, I thought thought Everton did well. I didn't think it was a game where, although Liverpool had the majority of possession, the game didn't feel like that. It didn't no. feel like uh, Everton was sitting back and trying to hold off. Yeah, of course, naturally they did, but they broke as well as you know, uh, broke well and and uh, caused Liverpool problems. If I'm a Liverpool fan, there's two. There's a there's a few worries for me. One is the um, is the form of Mo Salah? I think he was. All, I think he was poor, really poor. Um, didn't get in the game. Didn't look to get in the game. Had a couple of flashes. And Klopp selection and again. I said this to you guys. We knew that Everton would sit in deep, and I think Firmino would have give you that little bit of um, the difference in coming in deep and giving Connor Cody and Tarkovsky summit to to deal with. Whereas. Nunes just stayed on him and he came, he, he, Nunes came to life a bit towards the end, but obviously was was probably tiring due to lack of mat fitness. So I would have gone the other way with Firmino and then brought Nunes on when they were tired and, and bullied him a little bit. So I think I think that was that was that would have been a worry for me. But they, Liverpool just looked really lacklustre. It was all laboured and slow, where you would have expected a bit more zipping and, and trying to get in and, and through. That's my worry tank is, so there's two elements when I look at that game. I feel like I've watched that Liverpool game quite a lot this season in that there's there's just something missing in that they look tired. 
they look yeah. really tired. And I think it was Matt Brooks, one of our listeners, sent in a question, questioning, I suppose, why Liverpool had a full pre-season instead of tailoring it. That He said that the players look goosed. And I, I think there is something in this. You know, Liverpool's fullbacks, for example, seem to be doing 60-minute stints at the moment. It's like they can't complete 90 minutes. And it seems like they need rotation. We obviously, Fabinho looks goosed. He's basically doing the work of three people in there. No disrespect to Harvey Elliott or, or Carvalho, but they're not known from their, for their defence. Defensive, uh, the defensive side of the game. I just feel like Liverpool look like a team that the shorter legs. I think I've seen a stat actually. I think it was from a, a guy called Dan Kennett. Um, Liverpool have ran twenty kilometers less than opponents over the last six games. Um, and if you compare it against the same fixtures from last season, it's eleven k less. So I was looking at when I first seen the stat, I was like, OK, maybe it's just Liverpool have more of the ball. So they're making their yeah. opponents run. But if you're directly correlating it to the same fixtures as last season, that was quite alarming for me that Liverpool are running 11, 11 K less. What do, you, what do you think it is, mate? Do you think it is all down to this lack of control in midfield? We've got a couple of key players missing or do you think there's some something bigger at play? I'm hoping it's that because if it isn't that, we're kind of we're in a little bit of trouble. Because I mean, we I think I said to you in the WhatsApp group after a couple of games, Liverpool, we looked fucked. And you're like, the season's literally just began. I mean, how can you look this fucked? You're um, not confident on top four for Liverpool. At I'm the not moment, con- are you? I'm not confident at all. And, and there's nothing, there's nothing what I've seen to make me change my mind. You know what? Yeah, we've gone and got a draw against uh, Everton. You look at them fixtures, say for instance, Liverpool two years ago, these early fixtures, what we've just got. We'd be sat here going, I expect Liverpool to win every single one of them games. I don't mm-hmm. see where we drop points in them games. You know, I said to you about Newcastle. I had a feeling about Newcastle. I was thinking, I think we dropped more points. And it took us a 98-minute fucking goal to get it. There's just something about us what is not. We just we, we just don't seem to have these control over games. I think we're, we, we, we're giving chances up a lot, you know, big chances as well to... We haven't played anyone who's like spectacular like a Man City. I feel if we played a Man City at this stage, we get our fucking pants pulled down and we get a right spanking. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is it is a concern and you just hope that the likes of Thiago coming back fit. But then you look at the rest, Jamie, who else, who else should we be looking at? What's going to make such a big change? For me, when I look at it, it, it seems like a control issue in, in midfield. In that, Like Liverpool over the last sample size, four years, whatever you want to call it, their ability to manage games is so strong. Whereas now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking in midfield, you've got two young lads. You've got Fabinho who looks dead on his feet. Virgil van Dijk is is noticeably off the boil. Trent is noticeably off the boil. Robbo. So these senior pros who have been there, done it, won it, know how to manage games aren't on at the races. So when you're looking at this and you're saying, OK, you're looking ahead maybe to Napoli now. Liverpool have got a tough run of fixtures with the Champions League back. Thiago's back, which is a massive, uh, massive bonus. Um, you know, I think he's going to give us a little bit more control in their ability to maybe rotate Fabino. I think we'll see more of this Arthur lad who in... Um, for want of a better phrase, is nearly like a Thiago light, if you want. Um, he's going to come and he's comfortable on the ball. Liverpool just don't look like they can slow the game down, take the sting out of a game. You know when you go through those 10-minute periods where games swing and you naturally as a player know, oh, shit, it's going away from us a little bit here. We've just, for the next 10 minutes, we need to do more of X to stop something from happening. Liverpool just don't seem to control games anymore. Um, and I just feel like they're getting dragged into, it feels like dogfights. It feels like every game at the moment is like a cup final for Liverpool. Whereas over the years, you made the point there, they used to be able to just put games to bed and then just manage it. Whereas they're just having to go to the well time and time and time again. So I'm hoping the likes of an Arthur and a Thiago can come in and take the sting out of games. We also need my honest opinion, to get that front three functioning properly. I feel like the reason why Liverpool have been so successful, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mo Salah, the connection down the right, and those kind of diagonal runs, the movement, the connections between the front three, none of that is there. That is that is Liverpool's yeah. best attacking threats that are all not there. I think Nunes looks, while sometimes looks a bit raw, his touch or body shape seems a bit weird, he's then prone to moments of unbelievable brilliance, that control, the volley. You can see there's a player there, but it nearly feels like we've 
trying to build a system to get the best out of Nunes, when in reality, we should be building a system to get the best out of Trent and Salah and finding a way to incorporate Nunes into that. So it just feels like the team's a little bit all over the place at the moment. And I don't know about you, mate, but it, like I'm a, I'm a little worried. I think we'll turn a corner. Don't get me wrong. I still think we'll get top four, absolutely. And, and I think we'll be be a lot more like the Liverpool of old in, in a month or two when we get players back. But I have to say, Tank, it's a bit of a worry. Well, it is, and this is why I said to you, who who do you think makes a difference to us coming back? Because for me, there's only Thiago. Now, we, when he's on his game, he's fucking unbelievable, and he, he can like dictate you games. But, no. no, listen, I always like listen. He's unbelievable against the likes of Watford and Bournemouth. And, Don't you know, start he's, all uh, that again. <laughs> <laughs> but my as my concern is is more than a my concern is the fucking you know. For me, Van Dyke is looking and. Uh, I'll probably get a bit of stick for this. He's looking like a fucking bang average centre half. He's looking like a John Stones, in my opinion. Here, He's you. I watched. Great. I watched that. I watched that Newcastle setup, and they were just fucking waiting for us to for for him to get the ball, and he was swooping all over him. Now players now are running a, a Van Dyke and thinking I'll go past them. Mm-hmm. You go two years back, you see players run, see it was him, turn back and yeah, give the ball okay. to your midfield and go, do- now, Martial went past Van Dyke four times in 45 minutes uh, uh, at Old Trafford. That that's, mm. does not happen to him. Yeah, he but seems now, a, a he's become- yard and- short of pace, doesn't he? Listen, I, I, said, I said it the other week, I would drop him. I would said you? it the other week, I would drop him. I'd- Gomez has been fucking outstanding. I, was, and I think Matt is a very good though, defender. I was gonna- because I think because Van Dijk's dropped off, the emphasis has left Gomez and his distribution on uh, Saturday was poor. Gomez is, I thought, he's, he, I think he had a free kick when he went to right back and he just booted it straight out. Um, so if I'm the opposition and Van Dijk doesn't fancy it, I'm going, let Gomez have the ball and let him try them long raking balls because he he, he did, certainly didn't have it on Saturday and he just kept giving you the giving the ball away to to Everton. So that's another issue when Van Dijk's massively off it because he's the one who plays them them raking balls. Yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how Klopp manages it because when you've got your senior pros that all look out of form together, it's it's going to be tough for, for him to turn it around. But Jim, I want to come to you on Frank Lampard because I'm going to give him a little bit of credit here. I actually think that He's secretly starting to turn the corner a little bit with Everton. Um, what? And the reason that I'm going to say this, I, I think the fans are bought in for whatever reason, whether it's because he's not Rafa Benitez. It, maybe it started off, he wasn't Rafa Benitez, so that like they were happy enough with that. But I actually yeah. think he does seem to get the club. He understands what the fans want. If you get them, that Everton fan base behind you, it, they can be a powerful force. And I, I think they look more solid. I think they've yep. made decent signings. Yep. I think the big question was, what can they do offensively? Yep. I think they've made smart signings. I think they've cut, kept on to Anthony Gordon, who, although he annoys the fucking life out right. of me, he, he's, a, he's a threat in behind and he's a pest and he'll pressure. I think slowly but surely, I think Lampard is, is turning a corner and the biggest testament I can give him, the work he's done with Awobi has been unbelievable. Man, I said it on Saturday, Awobi has been Everton's player this season. He actually looks better than the 25 mil that they spent on a winger. As a winger, who's awful, Uobi. And I, and I, when Everton signed him originally, I was like, what are you doing? As a central midfielder slash, one minute he's in the their, your box, next minute he's back in his box. He's literally non I'd love to see his running stats because he does not stop running. But you'd have them, lad. You'd I, have I, know, I'd not look, I'd, I know, too busy <laughs> playing uh, FIFA one night. But uh, yeah, get, he gets people going and he, he drives that, forward and with Onana in the middle. What they've done, they've built a strong... What's my name? Sorry, I can't. I always <laughs> want to can't. sing that, whatever yeah. they... <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but he's built a strong spine. Tarkovsky, Cody, two young wing-backs, full-backs in Patterson and Mikalenko, who had great games. Good, solid midfield. And then uh, with uh, Gordon and Demari Gray getting at the defence. So the only thing I would always worry about is, like say, scoring the goals. And I don't think Mope is the guy for that. And I think they're just waiting to get um, to get Calvert-Lewin back. And I think you'll probably see Mope maybe play more of a number 10 when Calvert-Lewin comes back. But that, that again, that we'll see that when, when that happens. But yeah, credit where credit's screwed. They looked, they looked a team and it didn't look like when they played Chelsea, for instance, towards the end of last year where it was literally every man behind the ball. Seem to have a game plan and it and it and it and it worked. Um, so yeah, fair play to him. And, and like I say, Uobi is a 
uh, you know, it's, it's been a master stroke in putting him into central midfield. Where are you on this one, Tank? Do you share those sentiments? Not at all, no. <laughs> I think he, I think he's bang average. He's out of his depth. Um, Still, even now, bang average, out of his depth. Yeah. Look at the plays he signed. Deli Ali, thirty-five million. Where is he? Yeah, that's a bad sign. I give you that. Yeah, you know the, the, <laughs> we're talking it, about. And I'm just playing sign. devil's advocate here. Is is Deli Ali at that stage for Everton and where they're at? Was he not always worth a punt, considering it's very little risk? And only but, really reward. Yeah, Deli Ali. Everybody knows Deli Ali at this stage in his career. He did, he's been a fucking unbelievable player. Deli Ali needs an arm round the shoulder to tell him how good he is and go out and play. Frank Lampard signed him and put him on a bench all the time. Put him on a game. He was getting beat. I think it was Newcastle away. Subbed him as if it's like it's his fault. So if you're trying to build a player to get him to work for you, you don't keep kicking him in the bollocks. And. <laughs> I just, I think he's, I think he's way out of his depth. You know, we're saying that Everton, they've turned the corner, they've done this, they've done that. I just think a signing's a shit. I don't think he's got any clue in the transfer market. He's bought Dwight McNeil from uh, oh, Burnley. Dwight McNeil was awful when he came on. But he, but Jimmy, I've, I've seen him at Burnley for the last 18 months know, probably. Yeah. And he's been awful then. So when you sign him, you're like, why have you signed him? You've got Anthony Gordon, who's a similar position. So you've just paid 25 million for the kid who scored four goals in his entire career. A will be now, you know, okay, he's had a couple of good games, but I'm not too sure about him neither. And you go with the games, they, they should have got beat by Leeds, they could have got beat by us, they could be sat there in the Premier League after six games on one point. I'm not convinced by it at all. The lad who designed from Brighton can't score goals. That's Everton's big problem. So why would you go out and spend 20 million on him? You might as well just save the pennies and just say, listen, he is not going to score the goals to keep Everton in the Premier League or to get Everton moving up that table. He just won't. So you kind of like I don't get I don't get his signings or as 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 way I just don't. Is it not a case though? And I'm again I'm just playing devil's advocate. Here. Is it not a cl- case of this is the line of where Everton are? These these players aren't going to take us to the top half of the table, for example, for now. But they're going to give us building blocks. Like M- Mope, I agree with you. He's not the answer, but yeah. he's but better than what they had. Money. Yeah. The money they've spent. Well, that's that's football on. though. That, now isn't it? Well, but everyone's fucking expensive these days. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but he's spent, he spent big, you know, he's, he has been backed while he's been there. He's, he has spent fucking decent money. He's been allowed to bring players in. And I'm just he not... He has looking. sold as well, though, haven't they? They have sold. Well, he's sold to Charles, and yeah, I get that. You know, I understand they had to sell him. But, you know, I, honestly, I just, I don't I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to be at Everton long. I don't see how Everton are going to make strides up the table, what's going to, you know, keep their fans happy. I just, I don't see it. You know, as I say, they could be sat here on one point, and they probably should be. Leeds should have beat them. Leeds fucking battered them. And yeah. I don't know. Look, I, it's 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 an interesting one. I I, I certainly can see. I, I can see why Everton fans are, are getting behind him. I, I definitely still think there's a lot of questions to ask. I certainly don't think he's going to, you know, bring the glory days back to Everton. But I, 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 when you look at a manager and you can see what he's trying to do, it's, it feels like there's a little bit more of a feel-good factor with Everton. You've got the likes of Ben Godfrey to come back. I think he's an excellent player. I think Tarkovsky and, and Cody for where Everton are at now. They're leaders. They're experienced players. They're going to make them more solid. The big question is, are Everton going to have enough offensively to get the job done? I I, I think I could see a little bit of what Lampard's trying to do. But um, yeah, cautious optimism for for Blues is where I'd be on that one. I want to come to um, Manchester United and Arsenal because this is something, I suppose, this was the acid test or the litmus test, I should say, for for Arsenal because we've spoke about it on this podcast before, is Arsenal look really good. I'll have to be honest. I think there's a lot to like about this Arsenal team. But they'd play, had a few handy fixtures. And we called it out on the podcast over the previous weeks. And this, Jim, was probably the first test for this Arsenal team, proper test against the United team, who, whilst I don't think they've been ripping up trees, I think they've been getting results. Yeah. And they, they seem to be, you know, slowly turning a the corner. There's a bit more of a feel-good factor. There's a lot, a lot less of the glazer out shouts, which we'll come, out to, <laughs> come on to in a, in a moment. But, um, yeah, what did you make of the game? Because it's a big result for United, whichever it's way you look at it. Yeah, and you know it's one of them things where you know this was United's first real test in their little um, run of form as well. And, and I must admit, I had Arsenal to win, but I, I don't know what Arsenal were playing at with their game plan. They've got when you've got Rashford, 
Anthony coming into the into the fold with Fernandez and Ericsson able to play. Why why are you playing such a high line? Like someone talk me through that. What what what's it? What's your thought process on that? Because they were playing a high line, but they weren't exactly pressing hard either. So like two of the three goals, you know, came from simple through balls, and Rashford's got the whole of the pitch to run into. Uh, so uh, you know. I think I think Arteta has had a had a stinker there. I think Arsenal have got too much from United, but I think he's just I don't I don't know why he's played a, a line as high as that. I think he's thought that United don't press, they don't you know they don't get in behind anymore. So let's go push forward and and take the game to them. And they've just been caught um, and they got caught napping quite a few times. So yeah, but I thought Anthony looked good. I said it on on here the last week that he's a player, and I think he'll do well. Um, so you know, from United's point of view, Martinez playing well. I think, I think there's there's a lot of positive for them to take from that from that victory. From Arsenal, I think you've got to be looking at Arteta to say what what is going on with that high line. What's what what are you thinking? Do you think he's been a bit naive, Tank Arteta? I thought he should have come out and said, "I've fucked up." Yeah, I thought I thought I, I'd have thought a lot of them, and if he'd have come out and just went. When he made that, was it the triple substitution? You were strange, like, yeah. Why they were all over that? the shop, weren't you're, they? You're, you're fucking. You're actually looking like the side who's going to go on and get the equaliser and win this game, and then you just went to United. I tell you what, we're going to do. We're just going to leave ourselves completely and utterly exposed in the middle of the pitch, and you just put a ball through there and get it. And I was like, why would you make them substitutions at that time? It's just like totally fucking bizarre because there was only one team who was going on there, and then you're like, United must have been thinking, fucking hell, how good's this? I mean, it's, it's, see, it's funny. You look at it, right? Arteta, I, I actually re, I buy into what he's doing. I think he's a good coach. Um, I think he's but he's recruited well. They've got a clear way of playing. If you think back to the All or Nothing documentary in the big game at Liverpool, he was the reason why they threw yeah. that game away as he well. He couldn't game, handle, man. yeah, he couldn't handle the emotion. He got wrapped up in it and, and it turned the tide of the game. I think you look at the United game and I, I see what he's trying to do he wants to imprint their style on United he wants to go to Old Trafford and make a statement and show everybody that this Arsenal team mean business but if you're looking at that game there and it's 1-1 you don't necessarily need to go and try and win the game if if, if the dust settles and you go away from Old Trafford with the points and Arsenal are sat top of the league undefeated that's growth for Arsenal for me. So why does he why does he need to put his balls on the table at that point in the game? Like I think it was the it, to be fair, it was a brilliant through ball from Fernandez. But it it was like the partner of the Red Sea. Like I was going to say, it was it was a great ball, but it's not. It, it didn't have to be. You know, there was a big gap. In. It was a big yeah, gap, yeah. and it was yeah. a big space in behind. I think even me and you could have played that ball. And we know Tank definitely me. We definitely could have played me. it. Like, but uh, you know, it's. You're right, Jimmy. It, it doesn't have to be a great ball because there's nah, that much space. And you that area. high, you just like just click that over or just lob one over the top. And yeah. look, Rashford, and we'll come to Rashford in a minute, Jimmy. Uh, we will. Be. Rashford, <laughs> Rashford <laughs> one thing the kid is, he's fucking rapid. So if you, you're giving Rashford 30 yards of free space to run into, but then you're playing right into his hands. And I just thought I'll tether it. I, I, I just think he's completely and utterly naive. He's done it. It's twice and it's cost him. He, he riled the fans up at Anfield that time, if you remember, when we, I thought we were on the back foot and then all of a sudden we go bang, bang, score, and then the game's over. I just thought he'd give Man United the punch and then comes out and tries to make out how wonderful they played, how many this they had and how many passes. Just come out and say, I fucked up there, made the wrong changes and it's killed us. It's killed, I've killed my team. So we're at the point now where our mate uh, Graham Murphy sent. Well, he didn't actually send in a question. He just wanted to to get a response to something off the back of this game. And we've been vocal on this podcast in saying that Christian Eriksen and Bruno Fernandez could not play together in midfield. That Martinez was too small to play in the Premier League. Is it time for anyone on this podcast to eat humble pie yet, or are people just getting a bit carried away? And I'll come to you first, Jim, before I go to Tank. Um, I think they're playing well together. I think they found a way to, to play together. I, you know, from where Man United started the season to where they are now is chalk and cheese. So fair play to Ten Hag and fair play to the players, you know. But it wasn't really a test. They're not playing Arsenal at their, you know, Arsenal have literally gifted them the game, you know, not had to work and and do stuff where you think, yeah, that, that looks good, that. Yeah, it looks good on paper. When you actually break it down, the goals were simple. Um, and you know, it, it, 
they they've not really had to do much for the win. So fair play to Ten Hag. I, I, I like that Martinez looks good and fair play. Like I you know I said to to you guys about you know being five foot nine shouldn't have, but he like I said he was awful the first couple of games and he seems to have found his feet. So fair play. Yeah, I'll have some pie. <laughs> you're always you're always fond of the pie, aren't you, Jim, to be fair. Anyway, swiftly on. Um yeah, Tank, what about you, mate? Because I, I I'd probably be if it's I don't want to say you just sound like a, a dickhead Liverpool fan, right? United are, are trying to build towards something, so it's not going to be fixed overnight, right? I also do think that too much is being made of the the result when you look at the results in isolation, the Liverpool game. Fair enough. Liverpool weren't great. United worked really hard. Liverpool could have got something from that game on another night. But to be fair, they, they, there was a marked improvement in terms of effort, application. They got the result. Leicester are absolute dirt. Let's be oh, honest. They are so oh. bad. Like, so, so bad. And like you said there, Arsenal gift played right into my, right into Manchester United hands. But the feel-good factor has been returned to the club. Where are you on this kind of United resurgence tank and, and the possibility of maybe having to eat some humble pie? You don't seem the, the type to, to uh, eat much humble pie. I was going to say eat pie there. But no. <laughs> well, <laughs> Sharon. What, 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 what I will say is, like, Ericsson has surprised me. I'll give I'll give him that. I'll give Murph that. I never see him as playing this defensive. But Murph was actually on, having a popper. Who was it on Twitter? Was it Fred Funk, is it? Yeah, it was, yeah. When yeah. he was saying... They're related, he's not, he's, so it's like their side. Not, their, yeah, yeah. Their, their side when they're saying he's not playing yeah. fucking defensive midfield, then he actually has been. And yeah. to be fair to him, he's he's actually surprised me a bit because he's played that deep line role and he's played it well. So I, I'll give him really that. Well, doesn't he? He's used the ball really well. I'm kind of of the opinion what you're at where I'd say two of the last three results, they, they could have come away with you know either two draws or a couple of losses. You know what I mean? Liverpool, that's probably the worst I've ever seen Liverpool play for three or four years uh, in the, that game. And we possibly could have come away with a draw. The only team that's really targeted the Hobbit has been Brentford. <laughs> so I'm still not convinced on him. I'll be brutally honest with you. I mean, a couple of times, Jesus, I know his name now, Jimmy. There you know, when he fly. went down, when he went down on that side and he's fucking, he went past them and he absolutely done them. And the Hobbit smashed them and took them out of the game very early on in the game against the Arsenal. I'm still not convinced by him, I'll be brutally honest with you. Um, I'm looking at Varane and kind of like, you know, Jesus was getting the ball and kind of bullying him a little bit. You know, he's a, he's a proper player, player though, Jesus. You know what I mean? He's, he he's is, excellent. He is really a proper good. player. He is. I've been surprised that his whole to play. So, no, I'm still not convinced on United, but let's not beat about the bush as well. They've spent 240 fucking million, so there should have been some sort of improvement as well. You'd like to think so. Yeah, so I'm point. still I'm still going to hold me, you know, where I am with them. But the only one who will say who's surprised me and I'll eat a little bit of pie, just a little side dish, is on Ericsson. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to finish off on a couple of things, right? Uh, forest Tank. I have to come to you on this because there's going to be a lot of people that want to get your reaction to, to the Forest game and look on the on the surface. I think the result surprised a few people. Mm -hmm. Bournemouth certainly haven't been ripping up trees. You know, I, I think there's probably been a little bit of the new manager bounce in there somewhere. But this is a game, especially given um, you know the the home factor. The, you know the the fact that Forest have made so many signings. This looked on paper the type of game where, and we said it last week, seasons aren't going to be defined. When no. we play the likes of Spurs, we when Forest, sorry, play the likes of, of Spurs, it but it will be decided on these type of games, and yes, that yeah. that that is a, a big three points drop. It is, and especially considering when you're two 0 up, I think a lot of credit has to go to the way he adapted Bournemouth second half. You know, he yeah, changed he the formation. Three, he, he went to a back three, and he brought two wing backs on, and he pinned Forest back, and Forest kind of, I wouldn't use the word crumble, but you kind of like. They didn't you adapt. Could, they didn't adapt to it. And yeah. when it went to when it went to two one, I think Forrest was still kind of comfortable. But then the lads put a fucking world in the top corner. And there's not really much you can do about that. And then it's just kind of, you know, one of the best centre halves. The McKenna's been absolutely outstanding for them since he signed. And you know, we just basically just gives the ball to Solanke, gives it away. These games can happen. Um 
it's a bad result, I've got to be honest with you, because these are they're the games where Forest should be taking three points. You know, they should be seeing Bournemouth off at home, especially the city ground with the fans behind them and and the money they've spent as well and the money that Bournemouth haven't spent. So that was a little bit of a kick in the bollocks, I've got to be honest with you, that you know, you'd expect Forest to be taking three points there. Jim, do you think from your side, like at what point does pressure start to build? On I, the on the manager because with you know we said it with many of the clubs it's happened with Arsenal United whoever you know Frank Lampard if it's Steven Gerrard in particular if you spend money with that money comes expectation that's yeah. not the type of result that you need. I don't think I don't think there's any pressure as such on on Cooper yet, um, but the thing you've got to think of now is we keep saying Forest will be all right you know they'll find the feet and they're not finding the feet. And sooner or later, that that ball, you know, that snowball, the more it keeps rolling, the harder it gets. So that would be my worry from a um, from a Forest point of view. But as I said last week, I said with Bournemouth, you know, fair play to them, four points from two games when we we you know we wrote them off as being the worst in worst ever Premier, in Champions Premier League Champions, history. Yeah. So fair point to them. And I also said that they'll score. You know, they've got more chance of scoring when Slanky's on the field. Slanky, yeah. And he scored and got an assist. So, you know, if they can keep him fit... Smelling might... yourself there, Jim. You're taking it's that one. You're happy with that shout, are you? I'm just, you know... <laughs> Dropping that in. <laughs> you've, got to big up, you've got to big up yourself when you can. But my point is, if they keep him fit, they've got... They can they stand a the chance. I still think they'll go down. And, uh, you know, Bournemouth fans are still telling me they'll go down. But at least they're having a fighting chance. But... Uh, from a Forest point of view, I think they need to just have a little run of maybe three wins and or two wins and a draw that sort of steadies the shit. But the trend. if they keep losing, you've got to then stop that run. It, it gets harder the longer that that goes on. And this should have been a game where they they, they should have won. So, Tank, I'm reading Twitter. You know me. I, I like to read a lot of Twitter and different fan bases just for, for the podcast purposes. But it does seem like there's a little... Is there a bit of a split in the fan base at Forest? Or there certainly seems to be a certain fraction that are getting a little bit frustrated. And then there seems the more level-headed fan base that are like, Jesus, you know, Cooper's got us to this point. You're quick to forget it. You know, give the lads some time with new team gelling. It, it, it's a bit of a strange time, is it? Yeah, you do look. It's like everything in football. If you read some of the fucking tweets, what you see about Liverpool, you know, you you do get the odd people, and you're like, is this fucking? This can't be real. And for anyone to suggest Cooper's under pressure, needs the fucking head wobble because the fella come in when they were bottom of the league oh, last yeah. season, and you know, he, he took them, he took Forest on the run where they got promoted the first time they're back in the Premier League for 23 years. They've lost 29 players through released out of contract or sent out on loan. So they had to make... It wasn't a case of, like, they've just gone out and bought 20 players because they wanted to. They had to. They had no squad left, basically. So they had to go out and get the investment. My only concern, and it's a little small concern with Forrest, is they don't look like they've got that goal scorer. And that, that, that's my worry. The big boy there who was at Liverpool, he got him from uh, Germany. He scored 17 Bundesliga goal every time oh, I see him. Have a go at his name. Have a go at his yeah. name. Go on, fuck. Go on. Dave, no, I don't Dave. even think I fancy my chances. Dave, names, we'll call honest. him Dave. <laughs> Dave. No, every time I see him, I'm kind of like just thinking, fucking hell, he looks poor. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're kind of like, I'm waiting for him to do something good. Like He, he looks a bit he, rigid. He looks rigid, raw, and I mean, he should have scored later on. I don't know whether you've seen a chance. Yeah, the touch and, and turn. He actually, the turn and touch was decent, but yeah. then he just got his angles all wrong. But for me, the, I can't think, I don't know whether it was Gibbs White who was just there. He could have just set it off and he had a, a, a you know, he's facing the goal, kind of an open goal, if you like. And yeah. that's my concern is that, you know, Lingard's not scored yet or looked really like scored. And my, that's my little concern with Forrest is that they need someone to step up and score a few goals from the front, the front side. Yeah, because it's a ruthless league and you're seeing it last week for Spurs. You know, if you don't take your chances when they come along and they don't come along that often, then the the teams can go up the other end and score. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out the next couple of weeks. I want to, uh, I want to finish off. What are we doing now? We're 48 minutes, right? We'll, uh, we'll finish off with a little bit on Brendan Rodgers quickly. And then I want to finish on Jim. Jimmy's got a question for the lads, a non-football question, which I always enjoy, uh, always enjoy. Brendan Rodgers, a lot of people, like to throw mud at Brendan Rogers, call him a bit of a spoof. Uh, I don't know where I don't know if it's because he there's a whiff of David Brent 
off Brendan <laughs> Rodgers. Do you, do you know what I mean? There just is, isn't there? I, I actually think he's a really, really top coach. I, I rate Brendan Rodgers. I know people within the game who speak very highly of him as a coach, but he has made errors along the way. I think he made mistakes at Liverpool. Um, I think there was an in, you know, a bit of a battle between him and this supposed uh, transfer committee and you know some of the signings he made. We're, we're definitely not um, uh, the, the most suited to Liverpool. And you've seen what that transfer committee has gone on to do for Liverpool since Rodgers left. So there's definitely questions across a, fo- a few of the clubs. The Leicester one is a strange one for me because it, it seems like he hasn't been backed. But it just feels like, I'm looking at a gym. you said it before, they look a really poor team. It looks like the players have down tools. And usually when it looks like the players have down tools, we know what's coming next. Is his head on the chopping block? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think he wants it. I think he wants it more than anything. Um, yeah. I think he's down tools, players are down tools. He wants his 28 mil in his back pocket and off he goes. Um, and he'll get another job. Of course he'll get another job. So I think I think the longer this season goes on and they continue to perform how they are, his um, star starts to wane. So um, from a lesser, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine being a Leicester fan because what I have seen is awful. No, you know, back with the back four, just no, uh, you know, attacking mentality going forward at all. They just look lost. Look lost. Yeah, I mean, it, to be fair, when they came back to two two, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to eat my words here. But you know, it was always going to. I thought that they were always going to. Um, push on and 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 you know try and get the win but yeah the, with the with the back line of you know Johnny Evans as good as he's been obviously his legs have gone now so he, he, you know you need to get him out and apparently there's problems with the guy's work permit that they've just brought in as well isn't there so I don't I don't think he can play <laughs> so um I think yeah I think Rogers Rogers is like a, a a deer that's been hit and he's just waiting for someone to put the bullet into him and and, and off he goes so um it's only, I think it's only a matter of time. But on the flip side, from what we what we think we know, they've got no money. So whether they just keep him because they don't want to pay him off, and and they, you know, they're they're on a spiral to to the championship. Is Big Brendan on a compo hunt? Tank? Do you think he's waiting for his dope? Yeah, and look, it's a cutthroat game, and you know. They only give him a nice new contract when they win the FA Cup and everything was sweet and rosy. So if you want to sack and pay him, you know, that, that's the way they, that's what the way football is. Don't give him a new contract if you think you're going to sack him down the line. But I do feel a bit sorry for him. I, I rate Brendan Rodgers very highly. You know, mm. you look at some of the football, what we played at Liverpool, it was fucking most outstanding. Exciting. Yeah, most it was exciting. scary. Can remember. You know, yeah. Absolutely unbelievable. You with a, with a back five of Sacco, Skirtle, yeah. John Flanagan. Ali Sissoko and Simon Mignolet, and they nearly won the league. <laughs> exactly. So I, I think he's a top manager still, I do, but it, it's take like... Take that back five now. <laughs> what? <laughs> you take that back he, five he, now. Less than he would. <laughs> but they do look, um, you look at that, I mean, just, uh, was it yesterday they played, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. You're looking at it, and they look completely shot to pieces. I mean, as you said, Jimmy, they got it back to 2-2, but there was never a time where you thought, oh, these could go on, or these could hang on to... You, you, you knew, didn't you, what was coming? And um, I think that in I disagreed with Jimmy a couple of weeks back, but the more I've seen him, I'm like, fuck. You might think they'll go down. I think, I think, I think, I think they're down. in deep shit. I think they're in deep shit. Down. But on the flip side as well, fair play to Brighton, mate. Fire, you know, some oh. of the goals they've scored and that that McAllister, what free kick and, and again another VAR decision. I don't know how they got to oh. that. Was it because the guy went for an overhead kick and missed it and was maybe offside? I d I don't you know, I didn't I didn't get that one either, no. but You'd be gutted if to have that one scratched off for that, but fair play to Potter and, and uh, his, his, his other one weren't bad, don't make no, no, exactly. Yeah, that was decent. Uh, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do Potter. a Jimmy here, pat myself on the back. I said Brighton and Graham Potter as my uh, outside bets, or what was it? What was it said? Uh, hidden heroes, or what, what did we call them at the start? Oh, I can't and, remember. Anyway, I nailed my prediction. Um, Jim, <laughs> you've got to go in 10 minutes, so yes, I'm gonna mate. give you the floor for your non football question. Yeah, so uh, I don't know where, where the most well, anyone who knows me or, or knows me intimately knows that I'm massively. <laughs> I'm a prick, but I'm also massively OCD. So there's a few things that I cannot abide by. So one thing I have to do every morning, and everyone in my house knows it, is I have to make the beds. Now, if they just leave it because they know dad will do it. So they just <laughs> leave it, not ask, dad has to do it. But I have to do it immaculately. Not like just make it. It has to be like crease-free. Sheets and all. like sheet. Well, not so much the sheets. The stuff that you can see. So okay. like it's... It, 
And it's the same for clothes. I have to iron my clothes, crease free. Any it's come and move in with me, really. Any inkling of a crease, I have to redo it. Now, the biggest one that massively winds me up is toothpaste and people that squeeze from the middle of the toothpaste. <laughs> Fucking kills me. Squeeze from the bottom, like, what are you doing? Just like, and then some mad bastards squeeze from the top. Like, fuck, you got all that stuff back there. Like, what I are you squeeze doing? from the top, you know. Oh, mate, fuck off. No, <laughs> fucking, I do. It's the, the classic... nearest to the top. Why would you mate, not squeeze? Squeeze from the bottom. You get everything out, don't you? More, you know, sort it out. So the, the question is this like, what <laughs> sort of innocuous thing that most people will just like, you know not even take a second look at really, really winds you up. Like what is, what is the one thing that you, most people could let go, but you're like, nah, I, I can't be having that. Go on tank. Mine's with fucking, it's just with Jack. It's always with Jack. It's like, he's constantly fucking like me and like the girls have the fucking big bathroom. So we can't go anywhere near that. So he's always comes in our bedroom and gets in the ensuite and it's always me shower gel. And he always leaves the fucking shower gel empty. And I think yeah. it's done on purpose <laughs> because I've actually had full shower gels that the, the previous morning and I'll come back the next morning. And it's fucking empty. Squeeze and I'm absolutely down, convinced that he either throws it away or just takes it in his bedroom and just puts the fucking empty one in my bedroom. <laughs> And there's nothing worse than when you're in the shower, bollocko. Yeah. And you've got nothing actually no, sh- no, yeah. It's like, it really fucking, it really gets to me. He's just texting then as well, a little gimp. <laughs> Any shower gel, Dad? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to think what mine is. So I'm a bit like you, Jim. I'm, uh, I'm a bit OCD. I think the one that, I need to see if the door's open downstairs because my missus might hear this oh, one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, not much that that much annoys me these days, right? But what what I would say, right? Is my missus when she does the washing, right? So like, you know, you put the washing in a machine, and then you, you you let's say it's on for two hours, right? You take it out after the two hours, and if you're gonna put it in the dryer or hang it up, whatever. My missus will know. We'll put something in the wash the night before, knowing full well that is not going to be taken yeah. out of the machine. So. I'll get there the next morning. I'll come out and like my new shirt looks like fucking chip paper. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just like, oh, it's totally, totally ruined. Collars are bent. In fact, you can see, look, look at the state of me collars here on this top. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, nah, uh, not bad. So, yeah, I think that's my one is just don't put the wash on if you know you're not going to be Can't able to take, take it out. out. Um, and then it might be slightly different, as in it's not s- something like toothpaste, but just. Noisy eaters. I don't even yeah. know if it's like I just yeah. like generally if you sat there and someone's like got a chewy and they're like, I'm actually not gonna do it down the <laughs> microphone because I won't be able to listen to the podcast back. <laughs> Noisy eaters, or if you finish your dinner and then like go and put this the plates in the sink and then just leave them there. It's yeah. like, well, I remember back in uni days, I think this is where it started oh, for me in uni leave. days. Like it got to the point I was living with five lads and like There'd be 20 plates piled up. There'd be like food that's now solid. You have to chip it off the plate or the bins. The bins, it'd be like basically you ever made the mound fall would have to take the bin out. So you'd be like, it'd be like a game of Jenga yeah. trying to put your cornflakes <laughs> on top of it. You know, if you've, if you've done something, clean it up, put it away, job done. I'm not one of these that's like, let stuff pile up. Just get it done. Keep the keep the house nice and clean and I'm I'm good to go. I don't know if that answered your question or not. It, yeah. it, it does, but I, I mean, uh, I, I, I wanted more uh, sort of... Specifics. Not specific, but just like things that are really specific to you. So like, you know, most people will get annoyed at dirty dishes and stuff like that. So that's but like talking really like specific. So like, you, I feel like you're the odd one here, Jimmy. Yeah, I am the odd one, mate. I'm, like, I'm I was going to say I'm, that. Mate, I don't I'm, know why Jimmy I'm just to say I'm a fucking like, weirdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, honestly, full, full weirdo. But um, yeah, if things aren't, like I say, with the two, like, Toothpaste. I bet you lot don't even think about where you squeeze it. You get the toothpaste, you go. Yeah, oh, no, and I that, feel uh, like you're know, weird for the way that you think saying. about that. And I bet. Yeah. I bet you someone listening on here is exactly the same. I bet they're like, yeah, I'm with you, Jim. Bottom always got squeeze from the bottom. Squeeze from the bottom. There's a joke always. in there somewhere. I'm right, signing up with Chatham tonight. Yeah, I was going to say squeeze from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let we us know you get on next time. <laughs> uh, right, lads, that's enough from us, Jimmy. You've got to you got to shoot in five minutes. Um, so uh, pleasure as always. We will be back next week. Uh, anybody that is listening. 
is supporting the podcast, please keep doing so. Send us your feedback. Um, let's try and get that YouTube subscriber number up. We, we still want to get to the thousand. Um, I think we're, we're nearly at 900 now. So if you listen to us on audio, check us out on YouTube, subscribe, let us know what you think of the videos. The more subscribers we get, the more video stuff we'll do. So uh, yeah, it goes without saying, we all really appreciate your support and love the feedback that comes in week after week. So keep it coming. But most importantly, as always, enjoy the rest of your week. Make sure you all look after yourselves and we'll be back with you again next week on the Boot Room Podcast. All the best. Cheers, Cheers lads. lads.